The peace of Jesus Christ be with you all. We welcome you on this first Sunday of Advent as we come to celebrate and expect Jesus Christ into our lives. And for those of you who are worshiping with us online, we welcome you also. A couple of announcements to bring to your attention before we begin our worship. Last week, we distributed the angel trees. Uh, we still have 10 angels that need to be picked up. Um, for, for those of you who are here, see me after the worship service, and uh, we'll see if we can get those 10 angels distributed this week. And if you're online, uh, there will be a new email going out this afternoon for those 10 individuals. They need to be returned next Sunday. So you have a week to finish that. Those 10 angels are depending upon Grace Presbyterian to provide them with a Christmas um, for this season. Today is the fifth Sunday of November. Uh, it is usually a time that we take up a collection for the Deacon Fund. Uh, you can do that today in the offering box at the back of the church. And if you're online, you can do that um, by contributing to the Deacon Fund and making a note of that contribution as to the Deacon Fund. Uh, the December table talks are available. They're back there on the back table. And for those of you who are remote, they will be in the box at the front door for the December table talk. Those are all the announcements that we have. We welcome you who are here with us personally and for those who are with us remotely. In silence and in listening to the prelude, let us prepare for worship. Please rise and join with me in the call to worship. Our souls magnify the Lord. The mighty one has done great things for us. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you today adoring you with our lives. We thank you for this blessed season as we rejoice and await the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that you would lift up this service. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
lighting of the first advent candle. Our scripture comes from Isaiah 9, 2 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoiced at the harvest, as men rejoiced when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will, will, the, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. The government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the first Sunday of Advent. Advent is a time of waiting and hoping. Today we light the candle of hope. The psalmist says, we wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. God fulfills his promises and our hope is in the promise of the birth of Jesus. We confess and acknowledge one God, holy and just, infinite in being and perfection, a pure spirit, most wise and absolute. Worthy is God, the creator and sustainer of all of life. God is gracious and merciful, forgiving transgressions and sins for those who seek his grace and his forgiveness. Let us confess our sin before God and each other. Lord, have mercy upon us. God, have mercy upon us. Merciful God, always with us, always coming. We confess that we do not know how to prepare for your advent. We have forgotten how to hope in miracles. We have ignored the promise of your kingdom. We get distracted by all the busyness of this season. Forgive us, God. Grant us the simple wonder of the shepherds the intelligent courage of the Magi and the patient faith of Mary and Joseph that we may journey with them to Bethlehem and find the good news of a child born for us. Now in the quiet of our hearts, we ask you to make us ready for his coming. Hear us now as we confess to you our personal confessions. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ remains in power for us. And even to this day, Christ continues to pray for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new beginning. The old life has gone and the new life has begun. Brothers and sisters, I declare to you by the waters of your baptism that you are forgiven. May you be at peace. Amen.
please be seated. Our scripture reading today comes from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, chapter 64, verses 1 through 3. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake your presence as when the fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries and that the nations might tremble at your presence when you did awesome things that we did not look for you came down the mountains quaked at your presence this is the word of the lord thanks be to god Advent begins in darkness. No candles have been lit until the first one is lit, and even then, with only one candle shining, the darkness of the Advent season is still in gloom from the lack of light that will eventually come when all of the Advent candles have been lit. Advent begins in darkness. The beginning of the season comes out of despair, pessimism, and sadness. Advent begins in darkness. I believe I speak for all of us on this, the first Sunday of Advent for 2020. We definitely come into this season out of a period of darkness. The pandemic of the virus rages on to surges of higher numbers than we have ever seen before. The political and cultural division seems to be further apart than at any other time, especially when considering the course of action people take and their differences by protesting and taking to violence instead of civility. Advent begins in darkness. A reading today from the prophet Isaiah should give us some insight and some encouragement as we begin this journey and this season of Advent as they too were in a period of darkness. Isaiah wrote his prophetic book during the civil discord between the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. The nation and kingdom of Israel had become divided and was at that time ruled by two different kings and they worshiped God in two different locations. This division among the people of Israel now as two nations of the people of Israel and Judah has allowed the Jewish people to become weak and has allowed the stronger nations to the north, most notably Assyria and Babylon, to invade and displace the Jewish people from their homeland and to have God's promised land taken away from them, including their place of worship, the temple. It was a dark time indeed. In Isaiah, in our scripture lesson today, the mood of the people is shown in their need of God. Come down, God. Open the heavens and announce your presence by the quaking of the mountains. It was a plea of despair. It was a cry for help. It was a prayer for God to return to them. And it is a familiar cry we have heard throughout the ages of mankind. Where are you, God? And one we have heard far too often today in the midst of this pandemic and the political and social unrest. Where are you, God? If you were looking to hear a bright and cheerful sermon on the advent of Jesus and the Virgin Mary and the shepherds and the wise men, hear me when I say this. You need this story first to have a full understanding and appreciation of what the birth of Jesus really means to mankind and to each of you. Truly, it is said 2020 will go down as one of the worst years in history only because we are living in that moment right now. But other years have been worse. In 1349, the Black Death killed half the population of Europe. 1520, smallpox ravaged the Americas and killed between 60 and 90% of the continent's original Native Americans. 
1918, the Spanish flu fled to the deaths of over 50 million people. The rise of Hitler in 1933 is often claimed to be the turning point in modern history of one of the most atrocious times in all of mankind. But nothing compares to the year 536 AD. Historians point to that year as the worst ever. In 536 AD, a volcanic eruption in Iceland produced a gigantic ash plume over the entire globe so thick it plunged the earth into a continual nighttime darkness for an entire two-year period. Consequently, global temperatures plummeted, which resulted in the coldest decade in over 2,000 years. Famine was rampant. Crops failed all across Europe and Africa and Asia. And unfortunately, 536 seemed to be only the prelude to further misery. This period of extreme cold and starvation caused economic disaster in Europe. And in 541 AD, an outbreak of the bubonic plague further led to the death of nearly 100 million people and almost half of the Byzantine Empire. Throughout all those years, many Christians and other followers of God prayed and asked and begged the question, where are you, God? And why don't you come to us? Much like the Israelites were asking when Isaiah wrote this chapter that we read today. But Isaiah did more than lament in this reading of the 64th chapter that we read today. Isaiah also offered hope and promise to the people, and he offers it to us. Further in that chapter, in verses 8 and 9, the chapter that it says this, Yet you, Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the works of your hands. Lord, do not be terribly angry or remember our inequity forever. Please look, for all of us are your people. We look to the heavens and to the mountains for signs for their quaking to announce God's presence with us again, even in the midst of this pandemic as we enter the season of Advent. But Isaiah does something with his writing that is so subtle to his audience to put things in perspective. Isaiah shows how God is with us even when we fail to see him. Isaiah is seeking to keep God's word of promise alive in a period in which the people stand on the brink of losing its spiritual identity by attributing setbacks not to human unfaithfulness, but to divine indifference, as if God has become non-existent as to his cares to the world. Let me say that another way. Isaiah is redirecting the people to look upon their affliction and pain caused upon themselves by themselves, not by God, and not because God is not there. In any period of trouble throughout history, people look for excuses or reasons for their troubles, for their infirmities or their trials and tribulations, and then they have the audacity to claim they have been abandoned by God and ask, where is God when I need him? And this is where our Advent season truly begins with the reading from our first verse for today. If only you would tear open the heavens and come down. The book of Isaiah and the writings of the prophet Isaiah are well known throughout the season of Advent for Isaiah in numerous places calls our attention to the coming of Jesus and his birth. Isaiah 7 says, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah 9 says, For a child has been born to us, a son given to us, and authority is upon his shoulder as the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and they shall call him the Prince of Peace. Isaiah 53 says this, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our oppressions. But this verse this verse that we have read today is lesser known, but oh, so revealing. Tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. Have you ever seen the sun rays 
bursting through a broken cloud after a stormy day, and the sunlight comes dazzling through that hole in the cloud all the way to the ground. That's the vision I have of this verse today. Tear open the heavens and come down. Isaiah is oh so wise with his words and his prophecy as he wrote it to the people of Israel in their time of trouble, but it is even more so revealing to us today in 2020. We need to hear those words today as a calming and soothing ointment to the troubles 2020 have caused on us, so many of us to hear. To hear, tear open the heavens and come down, come down and make the mountains quake. So he did. And his name is Jesus. We believe Jesus is fully divine and fully human. Yet we sometimes dismiss the second part as to his humanity because it seems to be lost in our understanding of Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth was born into a world of illness just like our world today. He was like us experiencing pain and tribulations. In her book, Stone and Dung, Oil and Spit, about daily life in the first century of Galilee, Jody Magnus, a scholar of early Judaism, calls the period in which Jesus lived filthy, malodorous, and unhealthy. John Dominic Crossan and Jonathan Reed, scholars of the historical background of Jesus, sum up these conditions in a sobering, sobering sentence. A case of the flu, a bad cold, or an abscess tooth could kill. This was Jesus' world. And much like ours, a world that needed the heavens to open up and to have the mountains quake for them for the presence of God. Jesus, in his public ministry, sought out those who were sick. There was no social distancing. There was no wearing of masks. Most of his miracles were healings from illnesses and disabilities that included debilitating skin diseases such as leprosy or epilepsy or a woman's flow of blood or a withered hand, even dropsy, blindness, deafness, paralysis. In these frightening times, we should find comfort in knowing that when we pray to Jesus, we are praying to someone who understands us not only because he is divine but and knows all things, but because he is human. And he has experienced all the things, including all the hardships and problems that we are facing today. Today is the first Sunday of Advent, and we begin in darkness. But there is light coming. The heavens have been opened, and Jesus has come to us by his birth to a virgin. In the lowly town of Bethlehem, Jesus breathed his first breath as one of us, and he knows exactly what we are going through. But the season of Advent is about more than the birth of Jesus, for that has already happened. For us, the season of Advent is the expected return of Jesus to come to us again and to claim us and to return to us and bring us to the place that he has prepared for us, a place where death will be no more, where there will be no more mourning or crying or pain, for all those things will have passed away. This is the promise of the Advent season that is upon us. Truly, we celebrate the birth of Jesus, but more so we anticipate and rejoice on his coming again, knowing the light shall overcome the darkness. But Advent calls us to prepare for such an event, and we must do so not only in waiting for Christ to come, but in hastening our preparations for Jesus to come to us. Isaiah, in that 64th chapter, goes on to show us what we must do in the fifth verse, just beyond our reading today, where he says, You, Lord, welcome those who joyfully do what is right and those who remember you and remember your ways. It is a call. It is a call to God's people to be God's people in the season of Advent, and that is our charge today on this first Sunday of Advent. So it is my hope and my prayer today for this day and for the season of Advent 
as you celebrate Christ's birth with lights and nativity scenes and displays, that you do so in full anticipation and expectation that Jesus will come again, just as he did in his birth, that you will continue to be in joy throughout this season for God's great gift and his only son and enjoy for what God is continually doing for you as one of God's own people. Advent begins in darkness, but the light shall overcome it. Hear these words of Jesus as recorded in John's gospel as you go throughout this Advent season. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. Open up the heavens, O Lord, and come down to us and fill us with your presence so that the mountains would quake and we may be ever expecting of your presence with us throughout all of our life. For yours is the glory and honor and power and might forever and ever. Amen. Please stand with me and let's affirm our faith by repeating the words of the Apostles' Creed found printed in your, bull, uh, in your back of your pew Bible. Let us say what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us unite our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, for whom all people wait and search and yearn for, even when we don't realize it, we pray for your coming into our lives in this season of Advent. We are waiting, Lord. Fill our expectation with the fulfillment of the Christ child and the Christ to come again. Renew our hopes, calm our fears, and bring us to the assurance of knowing you are with us. In gratitude and thankfulness, we send to you, Father, our thanks for the many blessings we have received. Help us, Lord, to remember them, even when we wallow in pity and want. Father, as we wait for Christ to come to us again, we have been charged as the church to be Christ for the people until his return. In our prayer today, we pray for those who are needing shelter this season as the cold returns. We pray for those who are hungry. We pray for those who are oppressed, and we pray for ourselves, Lord, that you would strengthen us with the gifts and talents we have been given to use them for the help of those who need your help. We pray for our loved ones, Lord, both known to you and listed in our hearts and those who remain silent in their needs. Come, Lord, and be among your people. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>
Heaven came down in the form of a child, and his name is Jesus Christ, and at every knee they shall bow, and the mountains shall quake. As the light of the Advent season begins to glow in our hearts, go forth in peace and in joy of all that God has done for you. And now may the grace of God the Father Almighty, the love of Jesus Christ, and the comfort of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. 